Mother, you were brilliant. I was desperate. Do you know what he said to me as I walked off the stage? Oh, Anton said to me, people who have long been unhappy never get beyond whistling. What did he expect me to do? Whistle through the entire play? Oh, I could play the village idiot. Oh, that would make him happy. That would make all of Moscow happy. Especially that cow, Olga Knipper, who's just waiting for me to fail. She's probably ordered all three sisters' costumes. I thought you've never been better. What about my seagull? You've never been better. Oh, my cherry orchard. Everyone said that was brilliant. Tonight was perfect, Mother. You didn't like my cherry orchard. Mother, you're impossible. Oh, I know, my precious. That's why I'm so lucky to have you. Kiss, kiss, darling. Oh, thank heaven you never went into the theater. The theater is for crazy people. <laughs> you stay home and raise your children. I don't have any children. I'm only 16. But you will have wonderful children one day, darling. You are perfect. I am your mother. Oh, go away. We have no clothes on. Is there any way to greet your mother? Hello, mother. Hello, grandmother. Oh, hello, my love. Wasn't your mother radiant tonight? My darling, you were absolutely radiant. Oh, <laughs> Of course, I would have given the role a little more energy, perhaps a slightly more enthusiastic interpretation. Yes, but it was me up there, not you, so you couldn't. But all I'm saying, my angel, is it seemed a tiny bit desperate. Mother! If you want to find another actress you like better in another dressing room, do so. Well, I just... Oh, I hear that Olga Knipper is brilliant. And she was so energetic. She's even sleeping with a playwright. Perhaps you'd prefer her to be your daughter. Whatever you do, my darling grandchild, don't become an actress. They're such high-strung and emotional people. It's a ridiculous life. What are you talking about? It's the best possible life. I should have stopped you. Should have spent less time on stage and more time with you. Nonsense. If you were with me, who would I have known who went to the theater every night and magically transformed herself into someone else? I mean, who would I have known who, who could make entire rooms of strangers laugh and cry at the same time? Mother, you were my idol. Oh, oh, you were everything in life I wanted to be. But I just wanted to be a better. You are better. Oh, no, no. You are perfect. Oh, I am your mother. Well... I've made up my mind. I'm going to be an actress. Are you crazy? The theater's for crazy people. I'm going to be an actress. Lord, help me. I'm desperate. <laughs> I just don't think I was very real. Our acting teacher says we have to feel it. In here. In our guts. Perhaps your acting teacher would do better in the biology department. Grandma, for acting to be good, it has to be honest. In my day, all you had to do was say the lines. It didn't matter if you were lying through your teeth. It's just that this is the first time Mother's ever seen me act, and I wanted it to be perfect. Grandma, did she come? Oh, I was early. She may have slipped in. Everyone in the theater department here says that when my mother acted, she was real and true in every single moment. My darling, if this country were different, your mother would have been the greatest American actress of her time. Is that what you do in college? Sit around and talk about your mother? You ought to be memorizing Electra. Why would I want to do that? How many girls at a Fidel party can actually speak ancient Greek? I don't go to fraternity parties, Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, if you really hated my performance so much, why don't you just say so instead of making silly conversation? But I loved your performance. I was terrible. Chekhov turned over in his grave. The entire Moscow Art Theater turned over in their graves. Well, I loved it. I loved it, too. Of course, that tubby Madame R. Cardinal ought to be arrested by the art police. Mother, she is the head of the theater department. And Trigorin. Well, hopefully he'll graduate from college and have a happy life as an accountant, huh? But you, my precious daughter, you were really very good. 
It doesn't matter. I've already told them I'm not auditioning for next spring's Midsummer Night's Dream. And I'm changing my major to biochemistry. Oh, really? I have better things to do with my time. Mother, is this young woman my daughter or an imposter? I'm not sure either of you are mine. Mother, look what the theater did to your life. It practically destroyed you. The theater never destroyed my life. The theater gave me life. Small and frightened people afraid of communists and boogeymen tried to destroy my life. <sighs> my precious, if you don't want to act, then by all means don't act. But I cannot tell you what it's like to be kept from the stage when every bone in your body is aching to be there. I can't tell you what it's like when the privilege of acting and creating is suddenly taken away. Don't do to yourself out of fear what was so painfully done to me. But what if I'm not very good? You'll get better. And someone younger and prettier comes along. Tear all her hair out. <laughs> Your grandmother is a very wise woman. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Mommy. Kiss, kiss, darling. Aww. Aww. And now... Get dressed. I have notes for you and the entire company. Now, oh, in fact, I think I'll begin before dinner by reading the entire play out loud. Come, sit down. Seagull, Act One. The Park on Soren's Estate. Medvedenko and Masha enter. Medvedenko, why do you always wear black? Masha, I'm in mourning for my life. What the playwright intends is it's so heavy with the symbolism. that glob are you going to put on your hair? You could grow broccoli up there. Where's Grandma? Oh, she's probably taking her 50th curtain call at the Plymouth Theater. Oh, don't worry, baby. She will sweep in momentarily. Kiss, kiss, darlings. I'm here. Hi, I'm Charlie Rose. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, Charlie Rose. Hi. I want to give both of you some idea of the kinds of things we'll be talking about tonight. Kiss, kiss, darlings. I'm here. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. I got three standing ovations. Oh. oh, the traffic from Broadway to your studio here was miserable. Mother, this is Charlie Rose, the host of the program we're going to be on in three minutes. Oh, oh. But so soon. Well, I suppose I don't have time to change. Darling, I love your suit. Did you borrow it from wardrobe? Well, of course, with her salary, she could buy out the entire house of Chanel. Well, at least I didn't come dressed for the 19th century. Charlie, do you know that my daughter has the most wonderful clothes? Because she is the most popular television actress in America. Mm. And now she's the three-time winner of the People's Choice Award. No, three-time winner of the Emmy Award, Mother. Two-time winner of the Pet People's Choice. Oh, stop! It. Mother, tell Grandma to stop it again. I can use this. Baby, put that camera down. Isn't my family marvelous? We're so diverse. And that is exactly what I want to talk about tonight. How three women, three generations of the same family, can achieve so much, each in her own medium. Grandmother is up for a Tony Award tomorrow night for a performance in Cherry Orchard. Mother wins another Emmy for Mary McTeague, Ph.D. And don't forget my talented granddaughter the first prize winner of the Soho Performance Art Award. You ladies are a triple threat. <laughs> I'll let you know when we're ready. Mm, thanks. He's adorable. Maybe you should marry him. Oh, Mother, I am not going to marry a man just because I was his guest on a late-night talk show. But it's a PBS late-night talk show. <sighs> so obviously he's intelligent. Oh, I should have stayed in California and watched you in your Tony from my pool. Baby, put that damn camera down. Why? This is great stuff. I can use this for my family dysfunction performance piece next week at the kitchen. I wish you'd do something worthwhile. Mother, this is worthwhile! 
This is my art. I am breaking forms. I am exploding texts. I am challenging the boundaries of video. You are making home movies, baby. That ain't art. Well, you're certainly one to talk. Mother! Just because Mary McTeague is the top-rated television show in the country doesn't mean it isn't art. When I did Shakespeare and Chekhov like you, I, I reached only a, a privileged few. And now I can make an impact. Oh, Mother, the theater is stained glass. Now it deserves to be preserved. But for me to continue making it at this time is selfish and elitist. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe I, I am selfish because I've never missed a performance. And the reason is quite simple. More than anywhere else in the world, I want to be there. Nothing makes me happier than to come in every night to a dressing room knowing that very shortly I'll be on the stage as someone completely else, and then I'll be sharing that someone else. All her, her hopes, her faults, her humor, with an audience that is directly in front of me. You see, I know that every night that audience and I together can make something magical happen. Ladies. We're ready for you on the set. Oh, my God. Oh, Check your sequence, Mother. Too much lipstick, Grandma. How do you tattoo, honey? I can't tell you how truly proud I am to be in your company tonight. Kiss, kiss, darling. <laughs>